So uh, I'm Dirk, uh, representing GEA. Um, we will uh, show you a little bit who we are. Uh, we are also in the world of insects for many years, and we have the pleasure to show you an alternative processing. Um, we will at the end talk a little bit about the differences so that you have a little bit of an understanding. Uh, we will guide you through what we are doing in the so-called wet processing. So uh, I will talk just a few words about the GEA group, telling you where I'm coming from, because as the other band already said in his introduction, we are a relatively large group and uh, insect Insects are an important part of our overall strategy. Uh, I will talk about that. And then I will focus on the wet processing, the basics, and I will talk about especially the main difference that we see to the dry processing, that is the stick water, because we are, first of all, separating mechanically. We will give you a little bit of insights, what we have learned with the references we have done so far, with the testing we have done so far, uh, regarding raw material uh, and the impacts uh, on the end products and uh, what is the impact of different processing on the end products where we have to focus on. As I said, we will look a little bit on what happens uh, in, 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 in the comparison to uh, dry because this is what we have now seen from Bern. So maybe it gives you a nice uh, comparison and you can recall what you have what you have heard from Bernd. And we are of course very open uh, to discuss a lot of things that you might have then a little bit later in the Q&A session. And as Bernd said for Reinhardt, uh, testing is a critical part, piloting is a very critical part, so I will give you some ideas where we probably can help you or what we have done so far even at a pilot plant at one of a very nice reference in uh, Denmark that I will call, that I will tell you at the end of my presentation. So let me start with GEA. Just a few words, as Bernd said, we are a relatively large organization, um, but uh, please don't be afraid. We have business units, we have uh, divisions focusing on your specific needs. Uh, we are relatively large uh, uh, working uh, in 62 countries all around the world, employing around 18,000 uh, colleagues. Um, you can see us on the stock exchange in Düsseldorf. We are listed in Düsseldorf. But that's all something you can read. What is very important for me is our company's purpose. We call ourselves really engineering for a better world. My job is within GEA Westphalia Separator. That is the picture that you see in the middle and on the right. Uh, we are located in Westphalia. Uh, we are producing centrifuges since 1893. And we are looking for really different alternative proteins. We are looking for alternative fuels beside many traditional uh, applications. We are originally coming from the milk industry. And proteins are a very important part. And uh, proteins from uh, insects are the topic of today, and they are with us already for us quite some time. So what have we done for that application? We have derived something, what we are doing more in the fish industry. So we have been in fish oil processing or fish oil recovery. We have been in fat melting for centuries, for many, many years, or for, for decades, sorry, but, but nearly for one century. Um, and uh, when you remember what you have learned in the first um, webinars, uh, then you have learned a lot about the uh, rearing and the harvesting of the living larvae. What we will focus on today is the processing. We start, like Bernd has said, with, a, um, we call it devitalization. So, of course, the larvae needs to be, let's call it, killed in a in a way that hopefully uh, the um, insect doesn't feel pain. Um, we need to reduce the particle size. So we call that grinding for the um, consequent separation into the different fractions. And to do that, we also need some heat. Um, we, we still have low temperatures. But we need some heat because also, as Bernd has mentioned in his presentation, we are not talking about oil 
like we have oil from rapeseed or sunflower, we have more fat. So we need a little bit of temperature to have it in a liquid form that we can later on mechanically separate it. So we can separate that one into fat. We have the insect meal that needs to be dried. So everything that you have heard about drying is also relevant. I have left it out in that presentation because we have already le learned a lot about drying. Uh, and you have, and that's the main difference in our process, an additional phase, we call it the stick water. And during this presentation, you will hear a little bit more about that. Well, let's start with the first stage, the devitalization. As Bernd said, it hopefully is very quick. The insect hopefully doesn't feel pain. I know that there is some research going on in that topic. I'm not a biologist. I'm a process engineer with a little bit background of chemically, chemi chemistry and, and process technology. So I know that there are experts out in the world who can uh, give a better overview of what's relevant to, to uh, larvae, but we have check with them that if we are applying hot water on a relatively high temperature, meaning close to the boiling point, uh, and apply that like blanching, uh, that is kind of state of the art. I mean, there are some countries, and, and, and like I said, we are a multinational company like Reinhardt's. We have to look, of course, not only at Europe, we have to look at all of the world. There are some debates going on whether you can grind it directly. We keep that to the experts, we keep that to our customers, we offer that devitalization. The water that we are adding here to um, blanch, to kill the larvae, is removed uh, via a vibrating screen. Let me tell you one thing, what we have also seen beside the uh, killing is that when we do it in this way, we already uh, deactivate the enzymes of the larvae itself and that later on has some consequences of the on the quality of the uh, finished product because when there is enzymatic activation that is not stopped you have a little bit of this browning effect that you might know when you cut an apple and you have the open apple there it turns brown it gets brownish and to avoid that with a larvae this process stage is also a consideration uh, not only from animal welfare point of view. Then you might remember after this killing of the larvae, the digitalization, we go to the next stage. In our company, we are also producing grinders where we can um, cut the particle size. Grinding itself is an important issue. I will come to that a little bit later. When you're talking about smaller plants, the grinders that we are producing might be a little bit too large, and, and this is what I also would like to highlight. We not only come in with our equipment, if we find that for your specific needs, there is better uh, technology available, we also look and scan the market. So here we found a German supplier uh, building pumps where we have a, a cutting device at the right hand side, and that has the same effect like a grinder. You cannot do that for larger capacities. Larger means five tons plus or four tons plus. But, but, but for smaller ones, there are really alternatives available. And that is what we are also trying to uh, put into uh, our systems to have the best solution for our customers. And then, of course, after uh, cutting um, the larvae to smaller size, and uh, after heating it so that we can actually have a free fat, we have a liquid fat, we come to our main component, our core component that we build at Westphalia separator gear, Westphalia separator. That is a horizontal centrifuge. Um, what you see here is a cross-sectional drawing, uh, giving you a, a slight idea. I will not go into all the details, um, but what you basically do is you put uh, a suspension, we call it here the feed, that is this, uh, the, the larvae basically, uh, into this rotating chamber. You have a high speed, uh, several thousand G acting on the product, but still being gentle. So on the left hand side, uh, with a moving scroll, we uh, discharge the wet solids. Uh, this is important. They are to some extent dewatered, but they are still what we call technically wet. 
And then on the right hand side, you uh, have the separation of the fat and of the stick water. That's the main difference to the dry process. We are at this stage still separating mechanically. We haven't applied heat to evaporate the water, so we still have a water uh, fraction. And that's maybe important to note what's the difference when we refer to dry and wet. Wet because of the stick water that we are getting from this stage. Normally, here you can achieve already a fat that is quite high in, in, in quality. You can put it into a tank, or I know that our colleagues from Reinhardt also offer something for smaller, medium-sized plants uh, to really end up with a high quality fat, or maybe there's a little bit of filtering, there's maybe just a static sedimentation. But I have to say we have also, and we come to that at the end of the presentation, delivered larger plants, five tons plus. And there what we also can do is we can offer a different type of centrifuge that is in addition to the decanter. That's a vertical centrifuge. That's a distec centrifuge. You might, some of you might know that from the oil industry or from the milk industry. Again, we put a liquid, in this case, the fat coming from the decanter, and we can further polish it. I will not go into the details. Unfortunately, we don't have the time for that, even though I love decanters and separators. But uh, if you have questions regarding this type of technology, uh, then of course you are welcome to contact us and we give you much further insights. Those machines are designed to the specific needs and we'll come back to that also a little bit later. As said, the water phase as a uh, third phase, when we talk about wet processing, that is something that some people refer to as a problem. Well, yes, it is a third phase and somebody has to do something about it. In dry processing, you are directly uh, evaporating it when you have the drying up front. Here, we have it at a, in a liquid form. So in, in very small plants, depending on the local uh, facilities, you can probably go to a wastewater plant with that. There is, I have to say, a little bit of remaining fat, just a little bit. There is some dissolved protein in it. And that is the point where you could say, well, why really waste it? Why not use it? And what we offer within GEA is a concentration stage for that. We can evaporate the water. That's basically a concentration. So we are moving, we are removing a lot of the free water. We bring the water to a concentration of maybe 20, 30% dry matter, depending on the evaporator. We have different types of evaporator. And when we do that, um, I will not go through all the figures given in this example. You will probably can, can look at it later when you get the handout. The idea is um, to concentrate the majority of the water in that stick water and use the remaining solids. And you can, as one alternative, add it to the stream of your solids. You remember your decanter, you have some solids and those solids still need to be dried to make it a meal that you can store and that you can use like what we have already seen in, in, in dry processing. If you are adding this water, you can boost the protein content you can make better um, use of it. And that is not something that we have invented for the insect industry, but that is a common process, for example, in the fish industry. So that's just applying what we have already done for many, many years in the fish industry. And another alternative that we can offer, uh, and I have to be honest with you, that is probably something when you go to very specific products, for example, in the food industry, if you want certain functionalities of the protein of the end product, or when you go to larger, much larger capacity, five ton plus, instead of adding the concentrate to the wet um, solids coming from the decanter, you can dry it as a separate stream. And why do you do that? You have a product that you can see here as, 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 as one sample, it's a very light product in color. It's, uh, it has a very high uh, digestibility. It's, it's really a different protein fraction. 
And, and, and for those of you who have probably listened to the insector some time ago, you can even do further processing. So there is a little bit of additional uh, investment necessary. So it's probably not interesting for all of you, but we just want to show you for those of you who want to create a special product with a high solubility, it can be an alternative to not just add that water back, but dry it in spray dryers that we mainly built in Denmark um, and use it as a separate fraction after a concentration. And then you have a very, very nice extra meal. So you have a more lower um, solubility uh, and you have a high soluble insect meal with completely different uh, characteristics as a third product. Right, so that's basically the main processing um, points that you should keep in mind when talking about um, wet processing. And you can uh, look at that probably a little bit later if you want as well. Uh, and we have asked ourselves what could be interesting for you as additional take home messages. What we have seen is that the raw material itself has a very strong impact on the end product characteristics. And I'm sure that those of you who have joined webinar one and two in this nice format have probably already seen what the different alternatives are. Um, and that is why we definitely, we come up with some standard plans. We come up with some standard layouts, but we really sit down with our customers and do some further evaluation. Therefore, yes, there are to some extent some standards available. So we are not starting from zero, but every single line needs to be really to some extent adapted. We want to understand especially what do you want uh, specifically with your end product. And, and what we call here the spin test, that is um, what we will see on one of the next slides is a very powerful tool. It's not rocket science in terms of very, very uh, highly sophisticated chem chemical analysis, but it gives us a nice overview when we take the larvae, process it in the lab, and, and do a kind of a pretreatment like we do in the, in, the, in the plant. We have already a pretty good under idea of, of, of how the fat will look like, of how the different solid fractions will look like, and where there might be something where we also need to uh, go to a uh, process together with you and checking if we can do something different on the way how you um, work on your larvae. And of course, I, I always tell people, what are you doing in process technology? You are a machine building company. Yes, that's right. But we already so look at ourselves a little bit like being a cook, being a, a cook in a kitchen and we build kitchens because we are combining different gear or other equipment to make it a complete line. And uh, what we see also as a trend is that beside the traditional uh, meals that we mainly use for animal feed, uh, especially when we want to convert it to something that we might use as an ingredient for the food industry. Uh, things like color, smell, digestibility, or other advanced functional properties like gel strength, solubility. We talked about that when 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 we can spray dry, it, for example, the water binding capacity. That strongly depends on how we can do it. We can't make your product better, but we can try to be as gentle as possible in the way how we treat it. Therefore, wet processing works on low temperatures. Uh, the devitalization, we talked already about that, has an impact, for example, on, on color changes. The grinding is an important one, the mechanical separation, and as also my colleague Bern said, the drying. One example, for example, when we when we look at the grinding, uh, as I said, we at GEA also build grinders. So my colleagues in the Netherlands, where we do that in Barkel, the Netherlands, have a, a huge experience on, on grinding. And what, what looks simple from what we know from our kitchen uh, can become uh, a little bit more complex when you look at the physics of a knife and this what we call the whole plate. So it is important that this all is adjusted to what you want to do with insects, that it's um, 
kept in a, in a you can imagine like a knife head needs to be sharp and that has a strong influence date later on on the separation so what you see on that light uh, on that left picture that is what i refer to as that spin test here it's hardly to see a separation a grinder has been used that wasn't sharp that wasn't adjusted so it was just squeezing the product whereas on the right picture we see a nice split of fat in the middle this gray um, area between uh, 65 and 90 percent uh, is that uh, stick water and then at the bottom you see a lot of solids so there was a kind of of, of, of good and nice uh, grinding and that's how we want to have it and it has a strong influence another example is of course our core equipment the three-phase separating decanter as we call it here you have a lot of different settings possible, bowl speed, the scroll speed. Uh, we can change the settings of that machine online uh, so you can influence the quality of the fat and you can influence the quality of the stick water. And also the different design uh, issues like the bowl angle, uh, the way how you design your bowl has strong impact uh, on the separation. And this is something we have done for more than 100 years. So we have a little bit of experience on how to do that. Um, if you have something that you want to use and are not sure if that's suitable, come and talk with us. We can look at it and, and, and give you some feedback if, if that's a good idea to test it with that. We have also test machines available where we could uh, find the perfect settings for your specific product. And another one is the stick water. I, I really want to highlight this in this presentation because stick water is one of the main differences uh, uh, compared to dry processing. And we talked about that the way how we process our stick water, whether we concentrate it and add it just back to the uh, finished meal or whether we uh, have a separate stream and dry it and, and, and have a separate product. That, of course, is a strong process-based influencing factor on your end product properties in functionality, in color, in what have you. And we already touched that point. Um, we come to the end of this presentation, especially when we want to go to food grade. And I, but I also know that for certain pet food uh, manufacturers, this is a very important point. It's the cleanability, it's the sanitary design. And I can only highlight, especially uh, when when we do that for the wet processing, we, we, as I said, we are from the dairy industry. We build plants for the pharmaceutical industry. That is very high end, but we, we have a lot of know-how how to implement that to also a wet plant if necessary. And there's concepts available for what we call cleaning in place. So you don't have to take apart the majority of the product of your equipment. You can basically press a button and the whole thing cleans uh, um, as shown in this example here. Um, so. For those of you who might be interested, we can we can talk about that later. Um, yeah, so at the end, what is the main difference? I, I again want to highlight it's that stick water. It's that water when we compare ourselves with a with a dry processing that makes the huge difference. You have seen already there is possibilities how to treat that separately or how to add it back or maybe for smaller plants, how to just uh, give it to your existing uh, water treatment. Um, I mentioned already, I know that you can also work on low temperatures on the dry processing if you if you look uh, if you work with special uh, equipment. For us, the low temperature, the lower product temperature is uh, always the case. We, we don't work on very high temperatures where we are already boiling or evaporating the water. Even when we evaporate it with our evaporators, we work under vacuum. Uh, our dryers, when we spray dry it, work under low temperature. So temperature is one of the issues to have gentle product treatment. And uh, I think also when we look at the perspective of food and the possibilities, how to combine it to make it a safe food, uh, CIP is relatively easy on wet processing. 
Um, the investment, especially if you have certain equipment, is very often a little bit larger. The 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 uh, the uh, uh, capex is a little bit higher, and uh, compared to dry. Uh, but because of the mechanical separation, you are removing the majority of the stick water, so your dryer can be a little bit smaller for the solids. And especially on the OPEC side, on the operating expenses, when we look at larger ones, three tons, five tons plus per hour, LAVI, then I think especially when we look at uh, energy expenses um, that we have these days, um, it might be also a good alternative to look at the possibility to remove the majority of your stick water mechanically before you go into um, a dryer. So it really saves operating expenses. What you can do is, and, and, and I'm glad that also my colleague Bernd has mentioned that, we can offer a test facility here in Oelde, uh, Germany, Westphalia. We don't have a dedicated insect processing plant, but what we do is we bring in all that equipment that you have seen uh, for your specific needs and can create this kitchen on short notice so that we basically can simulate your process. So we can simulate it in the lab in our test center. So we can give you a couple of kilograms to take home and you can do your uh, testing. And then we can all also scale it up because I think scaling is an essential issue. You can do a lot of mistakes when, scale it up, when scaling it up. And scaling also is important to be tested unless you have done it yourself to save you uh, from mistakes that you can do once you build a larger plant and, 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 and do significant investments. And the other thing is you can also do it um, at, uh, at a, a production site. Um, I'm changing now from our own pilot to what we do with our uh, dear customer Enorm in Jutland, Denmark. Um, he is having the luxury of having an own pilot plant and they can in his kitchen still uh, change some recipes, work on doing that. And I think that is also interesting. If you want to change something and, and you're not really sure how the market reacts on that, you want to check digestibility, you want to check market acceptance with one of your customers, um, they still use a pilot plant. Uh, they started with a pilot plant, but have that pilot plant, especially for that uh, in, 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 in place. And uh, we are happy to show that to you in case you are interested uh, in Denmark as one of a possible example. They work on black soldier fly. We have done that also for mealworm and, and other uh, larvae like fruit fly. My last one is what we are doing at Enorm this year to scale it up. And this is probably giving you an, an, an idea why scaling up is a critical thing and why piloting is so important. Here you can see really a significant investment uh, these guys are doing right now. It's a greenfield project in Jutland. And um, yeah, beside a lot of scaling, what uh, they need to do in, in, in farming and rearing, harvesting, um, they also need to scale up their whole uh, wet processing, what we have seen, and of course, all the learnings they can take from that pilot we have done together with them, is saving or is reducing the risk of doing something wrong when you scale up to this level. So here we have significant investment and errors being done here would be, of course, much, much more expensive than doing learnings on smaller scale. So that's basically what I wanted to present you today. If you have further questions, we are glad to uh, talk about that later on in the Q&A session. And if you want to reach out to us, you can get that later on. Uh, I'm just part of a, of a team and we have even more people working in uh, our GEA world uh, within your uh, specific area country so please reach out for your sales representative we have own people they are fully employed by us they are not representing other equipments and therefore focusing on what we are doing and we are glad to help you here in Oelde with your specific insect questions 
So that's it from my side, Bernd. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to talk a little bit about that. And yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad to receive also some questions later on in the Q&A. Thank you.